a principled pragmatic approach would then say we cannot override the democratic process here. We don't want authoritarianism to dominate the classroom. And so what the teacher would properly do is say, all right, we have gone through the process. What happens in a democratic process is eventually we call the question, we reach closure on the debate, we put things to a vote. In this particular case, what would happen then, of course, is the three students would outvote the, the, the single student. That group then, as a group, would reach an answer and it would go on to the next stage of the, the process. Now, hopefully, right, in the back of your teacher's mind as a pragmatist, you would say, or you would be hoping rather to yourself, that the group would then try to apply that set of answers that they reach from the incorrect mathematical calculations. They would run into a roadblock at a certain point further down, and they would then backtrack to this point and say, all right, well, maybe what we should do is try the other students, uh, the single student's uh, way of doing things to see if that works better. But there's no guarantee that that's going to happen, and certainly the teacher can't pull the strings, right, to make sure that that sort of thing happens. Now, the point of this uh, exercise is that uh, at the conference uh, with other educational professionals when, uh, when we were talking through this example, uh, you could tell very quickly who uh, among the educational professionals and teachers were leaning more toward the pragmatic model and who was leaning more toward traditional idealism uh, and the realist, uh, realist approach. Uh, the, the realists and the idealists were quite insistent that What's more important here is that the students get the right answer and that they therefore be corrected and it's appropriate for the teacher as an authority figure to do so. The pragmatic educators were very resistant to that approach and thought uh, quite insistently that the democratic process had to uh, uh, take its course uh, for, for good or ill in this, in this particular case. There's also a point about character education uh, that drives home some differences between uh, the realists, for, for example, on this issue and the idea, or sorry, the pragmatists in this particular example. What do you say if you're a pragmatic teacher to the individual student who is sitting there saying, I know I got the mathematics right and I just couldn't convince those three, but I got outvoted. Uh, what do you say by way of consolation to that single student? Well, as a pragmatic teacher, what you're likely then to do is to say, well, What's more important here is the democratic procedure. And in many cases, what happens is the individual gets outvoted. And what you just have to do is compromise and go along with the group, even if you don't think that the, the group is correct here. So what you will do is encourage the student to put the, the needs or the desires of the group above his own judgment and to be willing to compromise right for the sake of the group. That's what uh, your moral theory right as a pragmatist will indicate uh, a, a proper character approach to this this group dynamic right is going to be. You might point out to the student that that's the way much of life is going to be right if you uh, look at the business world you go into a manager's meeting uh, there can be lots of ideas floated around then the managers all vote. Lots of times you're going to be in the minority and you're quite convinced that the majority opinion uh, is, is a ridiculous opinion or it's not going to work, but what you have to do is, uh, is compromise, suck it up, go along with, the, with the, the majority in that particular business. Or we expand things to the political realm in a democratic uh, uh, political society. You know that uh, probably half of the time you're going to be in the minority uh, and your candidate is not going to win. Instead, that bozo can candidate on the other side of the divide is going to be elected to power. You can't sulk. Instead, what you do is you go along with the majority opinion for the good of the country as a whole. So you have to compromise. You have to put the, the good of the group above your own personal preferences and opinions in those particular cases. And that's a very different right, approach to the social morality that we're going to get to the extent that we emphasize pragmatism. Now, by contrast, if we go back to the initial situation uh, of the scenario, as I propose, a realist, uh, as, an, as an individualist, is going to approach uh, dealing with that individual student who is in the minority very differently. The realist is more likely to praise the student for independence of judgment, saying it's good that you thought for yourself, you stuck to your guns, you, uh, when you knew you were right, you perhaps listened to what they were saying, but you didn't let the fact that there was a whole bunch of them outnumbering you uh, outweigh your independent uh, judgment. 
Uh, so good job in, in, in being independent, right, in your thinking here. You as a realist teacher might praise the individual student's uh, courage, right, because the individual student is just one and he's got three other group members who are impatient with him, putting all kinds of social pressure on him to change his mind. And we know that there's a certain kind of uh, cowardliness uh, that it's easy for people to slip into when uh, there are certain kinds of social pressure. So we might, as a realist teacher, praise the student for courage uh, and not compromising in this particular situation. So are we likely then uh, to prize students and encourage them to be independent and courageous as individuals, or are we as teachers going to encourage compromise and uh, diplomacy for the sake of the majority interest uh, as the right kind of character approach? Pragmatism and realism really are at loggerheads on those character issues here.